Here we have a hydraulic circuit and we wish to synthesize the bond graph. First thing we need to do is identify our distinct pressures. In this system, there are distinct pressures at the bottom of each of the accumulators. There's a distinct pressure at the end or the end of the pipe or inlet of the valve and at the outlet. So we can establish for each of those distinct pressures a zero junction. So we have here a zero junction, here a zero junction, here a zero junction, and here a zero junction. We need a total of four zero junctions. So I'll establish one, two, three, four zero junctions. At the first zero junction, we have a flow source which supplies a flow Q. At the last, the spout is exposed to atmosphere, which we can represent as a pressure source or an effort source. And that supplies a pressure P atmosphere. Now we must determine if there are any elements directly associated with any of these zero junctions. If we look at this zero junction and this zero junction, each has an accumulator directly attached. So off of each of those respective zero junctions, we'll place the respective accumulator. At this point, we can proceed to the next step, which is to insert the one ports that exist between the pressure points. So between the first two pressures, we have a valve. Between the next set of pressures, we have a pipe, and in this pipe, we're counting for the fluid inertia. Between the last set of pressures, we have another valve. Now, generally speaking, the flow source here is what is supplying energy to the system. And here we have a back pressure due to atmosphere. So the power generally is flowing through the system, through the valve, through the accumulator, the pipe, so on and so forth. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and assign my power directions. Though again, I could wait till a later step to do this. Now, I need to, if I'm going to use gauge pressure, eliminate atmospheric pressure. So I can get rid of this zero junction, which represents atmosphere, and the elements and bonds directly attached. So that leaves now a simplification. I have a zero junction here that only has two bonds. That zero junction is attached to an R element. It appears right here we have a train of bonds we could connect this R element directly to the one junction so I'll do that there are no other further simplifications that be can, can be conducted so my simplified bond graph will then look like this I'll have my flow source, which goes into a zero junction. That zero junction has attached a C element to represent the first accumulator. And then I proceed to a one junction where I have my valve with resistance R1. And then to a zero junction where I have my next accumulator a one junction with 
my pipe represented by an I element and finally the valve connected at the outlet. My simplified bond graph then is a flow source with com sharing a common pressure with my accumulator, a valve off of one junction, another accumulator off of zero, and the pipe or the fluid inertia in the pipe and the valve share a common flow. If we look at that assuming incompressible flow, whatever flows in the pipe is going to flow out of the pipe through the valve and out the spout. So both the fluid in the pipe and the fluid going through the valve have the same flow rate. So there's my finalized bond graph.